Okay, perfect. Um, so thank you for joining. If you haven't signed into the sign-in sheet, it's in the Zoom group chat. That would be awesome. Um, and uh, if you don't know, my name is Olivia Fallen. I work as a career and industry specialist with ASU's Career and Professional Development Services. Um, I specifically work with the STEM CIC. And today we just kind of have like an industry conversation um, with someone who works in engineering. So I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself for brief. Hi, uh, my name is Gurpreet Singh and I hope you're all doing good, staying safe and healthy. And I work as a traffic EIT with HDR Engineering currently. And I did my bachelor's from Peck University in India. And right after my graduation, I moved to US to pursue my master's from ASU in civil environmental and sustainable engineering with focus on transportation engineering. And after I finished my master's here, I was very lucky to start my full-time job as a traffic EIT with HDR engineering within one week. And it's been two years and in one month, I will be moving to Carson City, Nevada for one of the projects for one year and then I will be coming back here. So I'm pretty excited about it and that's about it. Awesome, thanks. Okay. So if you could tell us just a little bit about um, your current role with HDR, um, kind of how you got into engineering, and maybe some of the internships you did while at ASU. Sure. So at HDR, my part of the job is to design the traffic side of the whole roadway and transportation system. For example, all the pavement markings and sign designs and the traffic signals that com comes under my part. For example, uh, I worked on Happy Valley Project, that's a DDI, and we designed the pavement markings for it, as well as the traffic signs specific to that section, as well as we did the estimates so as the contractor can make his, compare his estimate with ours and make sure that we are matching on our budgets. And for my previous uh, experience, I worked as a traffic intern with City of Phoenix, and I did a report on the crash statistics in City of Phoenix for the year 2014 to 2016. And before that, I was a construction intern in India. And what I learned in that job is that being a construction, being at construction sites is really difficult. You have to stand there for like 10, 12 hours and make sure everything is going smoothly, no interruptions to the public. And that's, that was the main reason I decided that, okay, I'm not gonna go into construction. I would rather do a designing job. That's why I chose transportation designing. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, are some of the differences between like traffic engineers versus mechanical, civil, or well, the civil, but you know, the, the other um, disciplines in engineering? Uh, well, the basic difference I would say is that in our specific field, you get to deal with public a lot. For example, I worked on a project, uh, it's called Bike and Pedestrian Project for City of Tempe. It's on Country Club Way Path. It's still going on. And what we have to consider is that we make sure we involve the public right from the beginning of the project. For example, we have to take their input if they, uh, like how, how wide do the path they want to rebuild, as well as if there are any obst obstructions to it, how can we overcome it? For example, if we design, uh, for, for now, if we're designing that path, uh, the one problem people are facing is that some of the houses can, uh, like some of the high house walls, people can look over it and people don't want it. They see it as their intrusion to their privacy. So we have to come up with a new plan and then we will have to present it to them. And if they approve it, only then we can go ahead. Otherwise we will have to revise it again. I think that's one of the main difference between our field uh, uh, with respect to mechanical or computer engineers. Mm, gotcha. So taking in a public perspective. Yes, we have to take public perspective at each step. Mm. 
Interesting. Okay. Um, so as far as working at HDR, how would you describe um, the company culture? Is it more serious, more relaxed? Um, what is it like on a typical <laughs> day? Okay. Well, I would not say it's very serious. <laughs> it's a very friendly environment over there. But yes, if you have a deadline and you're not meeting it, then things can get serious pretty soon. But uh, overall talking about it, uh, we're not required to wear like fully professional suits and ties every day. We can uh, wear semi-professional clothes and on Fridays you can wear casuals too. And from timing wise, uh, we're very uh, flexible about it. You can start at seven or eight or nine, depending upon your commute. Uh, some people I know, they even uh, they were even working from home before whole COVID situation. And considering the current situation, they have allowed us to work from home. And I don't know until how, how long it will go, but yeah. So I would say we are very flexible about everything. Thanks. Awesome. And thank you all for joining the couple that have popped on. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat box. Um, so as an international student at ASU, can you talk a little bit about, a little bit more about your job search and then like what advice would you give to other um, international students? Sure. So as an international student, I would say that the job searching part is a bit harder. And the reason is that you have to find certain employers who offer you the visa support, visa sponsorship. And unfortunately, I would say it's only like 20 or 30% of the companies that I met offered visa, uh, visa sponsorship. Mm -hmm. So for my internship search, I actually got interview with a couple of them uh, in June 2017, but they rejected me stating that I don't have work experience in the United States. So that's one thing the employers are looking for. And I was like, okay, I came here in 2016 and I was work, uh, studying full time. I did not have time. So how can I make that work? But I would say do anything you can do, take any part-time job you can get in lab of your field or any teaching aid, teaching assistant jobs, that really helps. As well as the, I heard that there are some unpaid internships. That is a very big opportunity. It looks really good on your resume. I actually did one unpaid uh, internship with City of Phoenix, as I mentioned before. I think that was the one of the main reasons I got my current job. And for applying for full-time jobs, I think I started like six months before uh, I was about to graduate and I applied in 70, 80 or even more jobs. Uh, it's, it's a really uh, hard process, but try to enjoy it and always be positive about it. You will definitely get a job. And one suggestion I would like to give is use LinkedIn as much as you can. It's a very powerful tool. I actually made a lot of connections through it and I sent a, I had a sample message set up for m my own and I would use it and send it to different people. And I, my getting a response back uh, rate was like 30, 40%. But uh, all I'm saying is that that can be helpful if you know that there is a certain opening in a certain company and you get connected with one of their employees and they can definitely refer you higher up and your chances of getting an interview are really good. So yeah, that kind of actually leads me to my next question. <laughs> um, as far as using LinkedIn, would you reach out to employers prior to your application afterwards? Like what was the nature of the messages you were sending? So uh, I would first go to their company website. Uh, uh, for example, I would go to HDR website. I would find a job opening and figure out what are the requirements? What are they looking for in the potential employee? So if I know that I have those qualities, I'll list them down. I'll write a text message like, hello, uh, how's it going? And I'm very interested in this specific position and I have all these qualifications or skills and I feel like I will be a, a complete fit to this specific position. 
So mm -hmm. that was my tech spot. And I would always uh, attach my resume through a Google link. So that was my whole process, how I used it. And I always sent the message before applying to the job because it's not very helpful after if you're sending message after you apply because sometimes the person can ask you to refer their name that's a very big point to get you uh, a interview and you said basically you just in your messages were asking more about the company the role is that correct yes gotcha um so as far as the job search process i think a common question a lot of career advisors get asked are like what are what's like the first step i should take when i'm beginning to um look for like a full-time role so what do you feel is like the timeline of applying to jobs um you know like when's the ideal point to start um what was like the first step you took that sort of thing uh from a, uh, I can talk from my experience. I started, I was graduating in May 2018, and I started applying for jobs in December or early January 2018. So I would say give yourself five or six months so that you have enough time uh, to have some interviews and in case you don't get them, you still have time to apply in more interviews and you can learn from the experience of your past interviews. So yes, six and uh, five, six months uh, is a decent amount of time and never get disappointed if you get rejected. Uh, it's totally fine. It's part of life. Just learn from it and keep going ahead. And like as far as um, getting your professional documents looked at, practice interviewing, did you do any of that or um, were you just kind of, you know, applying? I, I, <laughs> I actually took help from a SG career consultant and I actually made a mistake of uh, using that facility later around March or April, which I should have done maybe seven or eight months before starting my even starting my job looking process because after using that uh, you know tool i realized that i've been lacking on some of the portions in the interviews which uh, can really you know increase your chances of getting hired so yes i would definitely say get help it's always good excellent um so as far as kind of switching back to engineering as far as some of the top skills needed to be successful, um, what do you feel are some of those skills for engineering as a whole and then specifically traffic engineering? Uh, I'll speak for traffic engineering first. So for traffic engineering, you basically need a decent amount of knowledge of Excel, MS Excel, MS Word. Uh, there are a couple of designing software such as MicroStation, AutoCAD, and there are a couple of traffic simulation uh, software such as Synchro and Vizin. If you have uh, a little bit knowledge about all of these, then you're pretty good to get a get an entry level job because with time, uh, I'm sure everyone learns uh, and gets uh, pretty good at these softwares. And talking about for all the other fields, one thing that I can say is very important is to work on your communication skills. That's really important, even now or even in your further careers, if you want to, let's say you wanna go into any management roles or wanna be a project manager, communication skills play a big role in that. Uh, I'm actually still working on those. Uh, I've come, come a lot, lot of way. And I've joined a Toastmaster club in uh, Tempe, and I, I, I can say that it's been like nine, 10 months, and I can feel a lot, uh, a big difference. I'm more confident, and yeah, I would say definitely join Toastmasters or any other communication club that you feel like can help you in making you more comfortable in, in, for speaking in front of the public. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so again, I'll open the floor, but if you all do have any questions, feel free to either unmute yourself or drop it in the chat box. Um, so kind of going from there, what do you feel is some of the best professional advice you've received? Uh, the best advice I received is from my current supervisor. He tells me that always keep learning, whether it's, uh, 
say thing or topic about your work or uh, just for uh, non-work related let's say you you're interested in science keep learning about it you're interested in stocks do your research and learn about it just never stop because it keep it it increases your knowledge and when you're more knowledgeable it makes you more confident so that's the one advice that i received from my supervisor and i would like to share with you all mm -hmm. well, maybe, there we go okay um, what do you think are some of the most surprising things about being an engineer or like common misconceptions, something that surprised you transitioning into a full-time role? Mm. Common misconceptions. <laughs> I would say when I joined my job, I thought that I would not be involved in involved working with the public. So, but in a couple of months, I realized that, no, we are answerable to the public and yes, we need to take care of their opinions. In case we don't, then uh, things can get hard for us. So that was something that I never anticipated while I was uh, doing my master's. And I think people should get to know when they're doing their master's or even bachelor's about it because they, they can be better prepared for all the things that they're going to be facing when they start their full-time jobs. I see a couple of questions in the chat group. Um, oh, that's not, that's their sign-in sheets. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> did I miss something? <laughs> that's funny. Um, can you talk a little bit more? I think some students kind of feel nervous about certain software platforms like HTML, Cobra, what have you, how proficient do you feel you needed to be in those different platforms to be marketable for your role? Or do you feel a lot of it is like on the job training? Uh, for us, uh, we don't really use any HTML or what was the second one you said, Cobra? I'm just like throwing out, but I just mean like- Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Some well, of the common it, technical skills. Okay, uh, if I say, let's rank from one to 10 with one being no knowledge at all, 10 being uh, most proficient. I would say if you have a knowledge around three, you're pretty good for an entry level job. Yep. Great. Um, what do you think is one of the biggest mistakes um, students make in the job search process? Uh, I think the biggest mistake students make is they don't do enough research about the company that they're applying to. For example, uh, in the interview, it's always a pet question that they ask, like, what do you know about us? So if you can't answer that question well, it kind of gives a signal that, oh, this guy is just, you know, just here for an interview. He hasn't done his homework. It's kind of a uh, non-seriousness that, that, that shows from your behalf. So I would say do all your research about the company. Just get to know when the company started or what they do, what are they uh, like what's their strong points. And another thing that I actually see that is students do not dress up, like prepare themselves for the interview uh, dress code wise. I've seen like a couple of students came in jeans for interview. Maybe it's cool in some of the companies, but not all of them. So it's always good to wear some tie or suit or just check with the check on the website. Like you can look at the pictures and that tells you a lot about their work culture. If they're professional uh, and they're wearing like ties and suit, please do that. Or if they're like totally cool with casuals, then yeah, you can go with that. Yeah, I would say if you do have a question, definitely reach out to HR. Um, about what's appropriate to wear. And yeah, additionally, as far as doing research, um, looking at the mission, vision, social media pages, yeah, that's super important because for a lot of employers, if you um, haven't done that research, that can be kind of a knock against you, as you mentioned. Yeah, that's true. I mean, for my interview with HDR, the, the first question was, what do you know about us? So. And luckily I had done the research and I told about them that your company started in 1917 and this is your stock value. These are your current projects that you're working on. And I can tell you they were impressed by that. So it's always good to know about the company before your interview. Mm -hmm, definitely. 
Um, we do have a question in the chat box. So someone said, I am currently searching for jobs and I often see I don't end up having one of the several main tech knowledge. That's because I feel I am not in the field. Um, but do you think it will be an issue when it comes to interview? And then great to see you from, I guess, soccer that you all used to play. <laughs> uh, I think I know Kashyap. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me read the question uh, because I don't Okay, so I would say if you're not familiar with the software, try to do your research about that software. If you can find a lab at ASU that has that specific software, just uh, YouTube some, uh, go to YouTube, learn some tutorials, and try to you know get a little bit of knowledge about it. And when the interview comes, just be honest. Let them know that yes, I have a little bit experience about it, but I'm uh, more than happy to learn about it, and I'm excited to you know work on this specific uh, software. That really helps. Yeah, I would say. Um... Most employers don't expect you to be an expert in the platform as long as you have a working knowledge and you're working to improve um, yes. your competence. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're willing to learn and you show your motivation that yes, I can learn it pretty quickly, uh, it's all good. They don't expect you to learn everything. No, they're there to teach you for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and kind of to that point, as far as um, learning more about it, if you're not familiar, there's a couple websites, um, Coursera, EDX, those websites also provide different sort of like mini certificates or courses, some of them you have to pay for, some of them you don't, but um, that may be helpful as well as far as just building your confidence in that area. Yeah, I actually learned MATLAB from Coursera, but I never used it in my pro pro professional life, so I don't know if I remember anything now, but yes, that's a great tool. Yeah, it's good. Uh, definitely if an employer asks, you know, what are you doing to work on it? You can always say working on that. Um, so another thing with job searching, sometimes I'll work with students that have applied to 200 applications, um, kind of submitting the same resume cover letter to all the different positions. Um, for you, did you tailor your materials to the applications or anything like that? Or did you mainly network to try to make those connections? Uh, initially, I used one single resume for every job posting. And I think I did not even modify my cover letter except for changing the heading. So that I would say is kind of a mistake because you don't want to just use one resume. That's a general resume does not uh, serve as a good purpose for applying to a job. You need to look at the job and the requirements and tailor your resume uh, according to that. You might not need some projects to list, so take them out, use the material that you need to present them or at least highlight them, like putting them on the top. And in the cover letter, do mention it, like I have these skills, uh, based upon their requirements. So yes, definitely tailor your resume and cover letter as per their requirements. Excellent. Um, well, I think that's all the questions. Again, if anyone else has any last final ones, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, but kind of with that, do you have any final thoughts, words of advice that you would give um, to students? Um, I would say just be positive and I know that uh, current situation is kind of tough, but be persistent and try to make as many con contacts as possible. And I'm hopeful that you will all find your jobs and you will be successful in future. Excellent. Great. Um, well, again, thank you all for joining. Um, and yeah, if you do have any questions, I'll actually drop my question or my question, my um, email in the chat box. And then um, yeah, thank you all for joining and have a good rest of your Wednesday. Thank you. Have a good one.